Hey everybody, Ramey here, and today what I want to do is I want to go through, walk you through the Strava Elevate app. Now this isn't made by Strava, I shouldn't say Strava Elevate app, but since it includes all Strava data, um, that's what we call it. All right, so first of all, this is a plugin for Google Chrome, and also it's available for other browsers as well. So if you use another browser, you can get it from there. Um, you can see it's right here on the uh, Chrome store. So if you're not sure what a plugin is, basically if you just type in like Google Chrome plugin store, Elevate app, Strava Elevate, it'll come up. And basically all you're gonna do is you're gonna download it. You can see I just have the option here to remove it, uh, but basically you're gonna install it. Once you install it on your system, you're simply gonna click you can see where the button is, but I can click right up here. I can click open Elevate app and it opens up to the screen you're seeing now. Now, first of all, I want to comment. Elevate in the next year, um, in the next maybe six to 12 months is going to be creating a desktop app that's going to replace this plugin. So if you're watching this in like 2021 and they have a desktop app, you got to watch my next video, which is going to review that one. Right now I'm reviewing the plugin, which is what we're using now. There's not even a beta of the other one yet for regular users. So, okay, got that out of the way. So here is the app. So what can you do? What do you do with this? All right, so the first thing you're gonna do when you get into the app is you're gonna sync your activities. So you're gonna, they're gonna have you log in and connect your Strava account to this. So hopefully you're up, uploading your things to Strava, which if you're not familiar with is the, Strava is basically social media for like the Facebook of the workout world, especially like people in tries like running, biking, swimming. But you can upload all your activities there and Strava is actually great for tracking your information. They do a really good job, especially if I, I specifically pay for the analysis feature. It's like $20 a year and I can see a tons of data analysis. I think it does a great job and it's almost replacing a lot of my fitness tools. But there's a couple features that they don't have, and that's one of the reasons I really love the Elevate tools. And this is free. Oh, I forgot to mention it. This is 100% free, so it's great, easy to use, free. So I'm going to simply click Sync Recent Activities. You, as being new, would have to sync all. But I'm going to click click Sync Recent, and as you can see, it's going to go through and it's looking at all my new Strava activities that I uploaded, which probably are from yesterday and today. It probably should have had all my stuff from Friday, but you're going to see it does this in, I don't know, 10 seconds before it's already done. Now it only had to upload four activities. So if you have like 500 it's uploading, yeah, give it 20 minutes to an hour. It's gonna take a while to upload 500 activities. But four activities, boom, done like that in like one second. Okay, so we're synced. Okay, so what do we wanna do? So the first thing I'm gonna click, so this is just the news right here. So you can see all the options are right here on the side. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click activities. These are all of my activities. You can see the type, indoor running, run. I was moving for 23 minutes, my distance, average HR, HRSS, which is very similar to your TSS. Um, it's based on your different things like your power, your heart rate, duration, how long you went, GPS coordinates if they're there, all that kind of stuff. And basically it's a number that helps calculate like how hard you worked to help measure your fitness. I also display my TRIMP number. TRIMP is based more on just heart rate. Um, so you might see that number as well. And that's also just a different way to calculate your fitness. In general, what I find is that whether I'm looking at HRSS or TRIMP, numbers might be different, but the trends they show are pretty much exactly the same. So whatever you prefer, you can look at. But then I have my cadence. You can pick what you wanna look at here. I've simply selected these. There are a million different other things that I could be looking at. Pace, HR, average HR. I mean, you can see there's just tons and tons, different kinds of cadences, all kinds of things that I can look at. This is what I prefer to look at. You click on an activity, here's what's cool. It actually opens it right up to your Strava account and you can see your stuff on Strava. And you can see they have extended stats here that they connect to, which is really, really cool. And then you can see you have all your normal Strava stuff here. And you can see since I pay for analysis, I get some things like heart rate and stuff. But the Elevate app will pull that into itself. So you don't, if you're not paying for Strava anything, you'll still see that kind of information here in Elevate, which is why people are using it. All right, so that's your options here. Next, we get to our fitness trend. This is like probably one of my favorite things to look at because what this is showing is your fitness, fatigue, and form, which basically is showing you 
how much is your fitness improving? Are you ramping up too much? And are you, you know, in theory, are you fatigued or are you doing too much? It's, it's a great tool for showing like someone like training for an event, like to ramp up their fitness, to show how fatigued you are. So this first line, fatigue shows today, you can see I've been slowly ramping up my fitness over the last, you know, I have this set for since 113, so six weeks out. You can see I've been ramping up my fitness. My fitness score at the beginning was 7.8, and now it is 14.2. So I've doubled my fitness when you're using, you know, those heart rate calculations. You can set what you want it to, I have it set to using the HRSS, um, but you can have it set to use the TRIMP scores as well, if that's what you would like this chart to use. Your first level fatigue shows your level of fatigue for the day. Your fitness shows your current fitness. So if you stop working out, it slowly goes down. And your form is basically, you know, how well rested are, are you, you know, right now? So you can see if you take a day off, it goes down. The more you work out, it starts to go back here. And what's cool is you can actually set this to showing your training zones. And you can see where my optimal freshness and you can see if I get down here, I'm in overload zone. So they try to help you interpret some of this data, which is really good. And if you're interested in this data, I highly suggest you go in and start to look at, you know, um, what all of these specifically mean and how each of them are calculated because it's very important. You know, in a general sense, you know, it's nice to see your fitness improve. When I start to see my form dip or my fatigue up, and I realize I'm also really exhausted, I say that's a time I'm maybe overtraining. And there are other ways to look at that, like your HRV and similar things, which I totally use as more in-depth info. But I really like having these kind of charts to track my fitness. So you can play around with all kinds of settings here. You can configure it, you can choose, you know, if you wanna use TRIMP, HRSS, you can see like different times. And it's really nice to help gauge your fitness, specifically if you're training for an event or have a coach and they wanna look at it. But I like looking at it for fun, so it's nice that it's free because software like Training Peaks charges $100 a year to see this kind of data. And there's other free software out there like Golden Cheetah, which is free open source, which also will display this as well. And just so you know, this is called a performance management chart, PMC, they call it a fitness trend, but like Training Peaks will call it something different. Other places will call it something different. Um, if you scroll down, you can actually see the you know stress the HRSS, your fitness fatigue form based on each day, what happened. And I can click on this. If I click on this link, it'll open either one or three of these because I did three different types of workouts today um, up in Strava, which is really cool. So you can go through and see what each workout was calculated at. Really nice. You go to your year progressions. Um, and basically, you know, you can pick and choose. You can see mine starts at 2017 because I was doing things like using different watches, testing them out. Um, I really didn't start tracking my data until around then. Um, so you can see I've just picked 2017 to 2020 looking at all my workouts, but you can pick and compare like just have I ran more this year? Have I worked out? Um, how many years do you want to have here displayed? Um, you can pick all that. Really cool. Lots of different options here. Really nice to just see your year trends. Um, then we have our settings, tons and tons of options for things that you can show. By default, they're all activated right here. You can see like my heart rate stats, my power stats, my cadence stats, um, all kinds of different things that you can enable to be able to see this information. You click on it, it'll tell you a little bit about it, um, what exactly it is. But you can go through and actually see all kinds of different things here. And then you have your athlete settings. That's like your weight, a heart rate, um, and resting HR. And then you can enter in other things like your FTP and stuff like that to help better calculate um, what you're doing and to keep track of that. Your zone settings, um, I've simply entered, you got heart rate and you get all kinds of different power that you can enter here. Um, just, I have five zones for my heart rate, um, but you can pick and choose how you wanna do that. Um, and then you click on this at the bottom and you, it takes you right to your Strava dashboard, which is kind of cool. It opens right up in Strava. So I really like the tool. It's great that it's a nice free tool to look at in addition to what I see in Strava and other pieces of software. I do use it all the time. I think it's pretty cool. I'm really excited to see what becomes of the desktop app. So keep up and start watching and seeing like when they're going to do that. But go ahead and download it and give it a try. It's free. So there's no harm in doing that. I mean, it's cool. It's just more data. If you're a data junkie like me, it's definitely neat to see that. Thank you very much.